Stepping up from Class D airports is Class C. Class Charlie hits that sweet spot for airports that have more traffic than Class Delta, but not quite as much as Class Bravo. And they're typically larger airports with multiple runways to support larger air traffic. So let's go land at one. But first, we're gonna run down a few things that you need to know about Class C airspace before we jump into that flight. And for more detailed information on airspace, check out our super cool video on it where we used Minecraft to show you what it actually looks like. Link for that down in the description. Now, Class C airspace is fairly large. It generally extends to 4,000 feet above the airport elevation and 10 miles horizontally from the airport. But it's cut up into two main pieces. The first starting from the surface extending to about five miles. Then a second tier or shelf with a floor at 1,200 feet above the surface and extending five more miles horizontally that brings us to that 10 mile mark. Visually, it would look like a two tier cake with a smaller upper tier that was flipped upside down and stuffed on top of the airport. Equipment-wise, you need a two-way radio, a Mode C transponder with altitude reporting, and ADS-B out. To enter, you need to have two-way radio communication with air traffic control, which means they need to respond to you with your tail number. To depart, you'll need to get a clearance, but we'll get into that in the flying portion. Last, make sure to prepare. Check the sectional out, look at an airport diagram, and dig into the airport's information. Class C airspace has a few more frequencies than Class D, like approach, departure, and clearance delivery. Know which one to use and when, and also realize that Charlie airports have landing fees or the FBOs have ramp fees for parking. Guys, just do your homework so you know what you're getting yourself into to make the trip go as smoothly as possible. Anyways, let's get into the flying. Today we're flying the Cardinal with a good friend of mine who's also a pilot and we'll be flying from Deer Valley Airport to Tucson International. But you guys will be joining us about 25 miles away from Tucson where we're picking up the ATIS report. Wind calm, visibility 10, sky clear below 12,000. Now why did I do that so far out? Because of this right here. We needed to contact Tucson Approach 20 miles out to let them know that we're inbound, which is exactly what we did. Tucson Approach, Cardinal 2837 X-ray, 17 miles northwest inbound, full stop with Delta. Number 37 X-ray, Squawk 0413. Squawking 0413, 37 X-ray. Now their first response back to us is a squawk code for our transponder so they can identify us and direct us through their airspace. Once entered, they were able to see us on their screen and give us further instructions. Seven number three, seven x radar contact, one three miles northwest of Tucson, make straight in, actually continue uh, present heading. Continuing present heading, uh, three seven x-ray. Now, since we established two-way radio communications, we're technically cleared into their airspace. All we have to do now is listen to their directions until we're cleared to land. In our case, we were told to maintain our present heading until they got back to us. So autopilot to go. Number three, seven, X-ray right. uh, traffic off of your right three miles, joining the final Pilatus at 6,000. You'll be following them. Looking for traffic, three, seven, uh, traffic inside, 37 X-ray. 37 X-ray, roger. You can make a left uh, turn to follow them, or you can slow whatever you need to do, but you will follow them. Make straighter, we one more left. Roger, we'll go ahead and make a left turn, come around and follow the man 37 X-ray. Roger. So ATC had us maintain our heading for sequencing because we were slower traffic. And then they had us do a 360 to enter the final for the runway, during which we were handed off to tower. Number 37 X-ray, contact tower 118.3, let them know what you're doing, we'll see you. Contacting tower, uh, 37 X-ray. B118.3. Look Bravo, turn us out, 13, contact ground. Tucson Tower, Cardinal 2837 X-ray. We're making a 360 at about uh, nine miles northwest of the airport, uh, joining behind uh, the incoming aircraft uh, for runway 11. Cardinal 2837 X-ray, Tucson Tower. The plot is down a five mile final mo factor for you now. We made one one left, total land, wind 3204. Go land, runway 11 left, 37 X-ray. Our last contact with them is being handed off to ground. Cardinal 37 X-ray, contact ground, have a good day. Contact and ground, thank you, 37 X-ray. Tucson ground, Cardinal 2837 X-ray, uh, Alpha 7 requesting taxi to executive. Number 2837 X-ray, Tucson ground, taxi to executive via Alpha Delta. Taxi executive via Alpha Delta, 37 X-ray. And we arrived, and it was really cool to see all the larger aircraft parked at Tucson. Plus, it's right next to Davis Mothin Air Force Base, so we got to see and hear a bunch of military jets. But we ended up parking at Executive Air, who was gracious enough to let us use the ramp to pick up the next leg of our journey. Huge thanks to Executive Air for helping us out with this video, and if you guys ever find yourself landing at Tucson, make sure to check out their friendly services. 
Now, before we depart, I wanted to let you guys know about today's sponsor, Plain English. They have an entire section on airspace entry, handoff, clearances, and more to make sure you sound like you know what you're doing. Plain English really is the easiest way to take control of the comms, so make sure to use our discount code when you sign up to save a little on your subscription. But let's get back to that flight, which again starts with us picking up the ATIS report. Visibility 10, sky clear below 12,000, temperature. Another difference from Class Delta is that Class Charlie requires contacting clearance delivery to get a clearance for your departure, like this. Tucson Clearance, Cardinal 2837 X-Ray at Executive uh, VFR Departure back to Phoenix with Echo. If you haven't picked up a clearance before, it consists of where you're cleared to, the route to use, what altitudes to fly at, departure frequencies, and what transponder code to squawk. All this has to be read back correctly prior to contacting ground control for your taxi. I didn't have my headset turned Cardinal on. 2837 X-ray, Tucson Clearance, departure frequency 119.4, squawk 0437, and say parking, verify information, echo. We are at uh, Executive, and we do have information, echo. We are departure frequency 119.4, squawking 0437 for uh, Cardinal 2837 X-ray. Through to the next race, uh, route back to correct FC flight. In our case, they only gave us a departure frequency and squawk code and then let tower direct us through the airspace because we we're flying VFR. But once confirmed, we contacted ground control for our taxi. Two's on ground, uh, Cardinal 2837 X ray at executive requesting taxi for uh, departure back to Phoenix. Cardinal 2837 X ray, uh, Tucson, round runway 11 left, taxi via Delta. One one left via Delta for Cardinal 2837 X-Ray. Possibly the easiest taxi instructions I've ever been given, but we pulled up to the runway, did our run-up, and contacted Tower for departure. Tucson Tower, Cardinal 2837 X-Ray, holding short one one left, ready for departure. Cardinal 2837 X-Ray, Tucson Tower, runway one one left at Delta, clear for takeoff, one three zero zero at six, turn left, direct a mountain, then on course. Roger, uh, red, uh, clear for departure, uh, runway one one left, uh, 2837 X-Ray. Clear for takeoff, we took off and made our turn out as directed, and as soon as we hit the downwind, we were handed off to departure. 37 X ray, contact departure 119.4. Contact your departure 37 X ray. Tucson departure, Cardinal 2837 X ray, 4500, headed towards A mount. Cardinal 2837 X ray, Tucson departure, radar contact, Tucson altimeter 3011. After hitting our call-out point, we were able to turn towards Phoenix and depart the airspace, but we were still under flight following from Tucson. If we wanted to maintain flight following, departure would have eventually handed us off, but we wanted to be on our own, so... Tucson approach, or departure, Cardinal 2837 X-ray requesting uh, cancel flight following and frequency change. 37 X-ray, roger, radar service terminated, squawk VFR, frequency change approved. Frequency change approved, squawk VFR, 37 X-ray, thank you. All right. All right, that's really it for getting in and out of Class Charlie airspace. Now, there are gonna be some nuances depending on the airports and other various reasons. So again, make sure that you're prepared and don't be afraid to ask air traffic control to say again if you need them to, cause it's really all about safety. Now, here's my last couple of bits of advice. Be patient. Like we said in the beginning, Class Charlie can be busy and you may not get a reply to your radio call right away. We edited this video for time, but we often have to wait for our responses from air traffic control. Anyways, engagement helps us so much guys, so make sure to throw this video a like and leave us a comment. Ways to support us are down in the description and make sure to share aviation wherever you can and we'll see you in the next one.